Welcome to the Salty Journals podcast. Salty Journals is a podcast for anyone who loves having time in, on, or under the water. Please don't forget to subscribe and share the show if you enjoy it. So let's get into this. guys welcome to episode six of the salty journals podcast today we speak to russell ord a phenomenal photographer you know some of those principles i think that you find in surfers but but you know just in awesome guys in that he has a lot of respect for the ocean a lot of respect for other people embodies a lot of gratitude and is a humble guy if you've not looked at those photos he puts himself right into the center of the wave to get the shots he's been taking a lot of photos around in margaret river if you haven't seen the documentary there is a documentary out there called one shot it's really great watch definitely worth checking out russ's images have won him worldwide recognition and deservedly so he's based out of wa he lives in margaret river he's renowned for these images of super thick empty peaks of heavy waves uh, big session waves at places that are really famous with the local surfers like the box and the right he's one of those guys who's always keeping himself busy working on something new we chat a little bit about that today his workshops that he's running the ability to go shoot with him in the water i hope you enjoy the episode so yeah it'd be really good to you know i suppose understand f- from your side of the story how you got started into surf photography and and you know how it progressed for you yeah well i basically started surf photography because i got injured surfing myself Mm. and just you know instead of sitting on the lounge i picked up a camera got an old film camera and started taking photos of my mates that were all in the board riders yeah right it just kind of went from there it wasn't really until i got a um a water housing about three months later borrowed that as well yeah taking really shit photos all the slides (laughs) were terrible but it was just the feeling of being out in the water and not jostling for waves because you could swim out yeah. to anything, even waves that people don't even surf and shoot empties, mm. and it just felt great. So, your, I mean, how would you you sort of define your photography now? I mean, you know, you know, you've gone from just getting yourself into the waves to taking a few snaps. I mean, what's the sort of yeah, what's the definition of what you're doing now? Well, I've always. You know, that sort of evolved from there and I love big waves and I wanted to shoot big waves. So, mm. I, you know, I surf pretty solid waves and it was just a natural progression of, of doing that. Mm. But it wasn't until I was maybe five or six years into it that I thought I was doing really well, you know, just like documenting people's waves basically and yeah. how they surf it. And you think it's a really good image. And then I remember picking up like a Nat Geo magazine it was that the 10 best wildlife photos of the year mm. and they start at number 10 and they they go into what people go into to get the photo and i was right. blown away that's when i was you know climbing mountains days you know a lot of patience some shots took months on end and then it got to the number one image and it was like a i think it was a bengal tiger coming out of the water and i was like was an amazing shot, like a speed blur as well. Yeah. And yeah. then he started talking about how he went into it and he actually shot it in a zoo. Oh, wow. And so I was yeah. kind of blown away that you can compare what he was doing with what the other people were doing. Like yeah. in the wild, that shot that he got might have taken, could, you know, one week if he got lucky to 10 yeah. years yeah. to be that yeah. close and stuff like that. So. But what it did was open up my eyes on what I was doing because exactly what I was doing, mm. what he was doing, basically. The surf, you know, I was going out in a jet ski, picking up a camera, and right. I could shoot. I wouldn't even miss a shot, yeah. and it was super easy. So I was basically just doing that. And so yeah. um, the best part of it was open my eyes to, like, you've got to, you've got to have your own moment and you've got to not worry about missing shots yeah. and just ha- try to get a shot that's in your head and it took me a while to figure it out and that's when i decided to you know kind of combine my surfing skills and ocean skills which are developed over i don't know how old i am now 45 so <laughs> 35 years basically yeah into yeah. getting shots yeah and um 
and you enjoy it more because you can look at y- your images and you see effort and instead of just a moment and yeah it's still like uh, people even editors and um people that run competitions big competitions that only judging in my opinion on the finished product right and not taking in the story of getting the image yeah so i'm only impressed when i see something and think oh geez that's super creative yeah because i don't see myself as a creative so i'm like geez how do they even do that yeah yeah and then um or like especially with surf shots i know exactly what went into it Mm. it's like you know it's like a mountain climbing shot as well you can put up a drone and get an amazing image it t- yeah. take you five minutes to learn how to do that, yeah. or do you combine your twenty years climbing experience to climb yeah. up and get the shot? Yeah, yeah. They've got yeah. to take that into account. Yeah. I think everyone should take that into account, and, and people don't, especially in this day and age with there's so much amazing imagery on social media. You just yeah. keep flicking; it's yeah. endless. Yeah. But if you look at them and think, how do they do that? Yeah, yeah. Then there's a different story. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if that answered the question. Well, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely helpful. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, there's plenty of great things we can explore with with that um, that part of the conversation, and even into you know social media and everything that comes with that. But uh, or even creating podcasts and and you know how much more information can can actually be out there that's that's going to be meaningful or or worthwhile as well. Um, but maybe we'll we'll skip that for a bit, maybe. Um, how would you how would you explain your thoughts on on that presentation of the image with each of the images you know if you take a quick scroll through the the top 10 on your your website or something like that as soon as you hit the home page what would what would sort of capture the the wording or how you would explain those images yeah it's a tough one it, they all kind of like my favorite shots all, all have what we just talked about they have meaning and they i can see effort mm. the more than just the moment in time yeah so it's it, and it might not even be an amazing shot mm. but it's the story behind the shot that means a lot to me yeah and okay. that's probably why i get attracted to that type of work mm. and um i mean i'm not doing it all the time i'm not doing crazy stuff all the time that's for sure but when i'm you know showing my portfolio i kind of you know those images talk to me they might not even Mm. talk to anyone else but it doesn't matter yeah okay it's like my you know we sell a couple of images now and then prints and stuff and Mm. people want certain shots and i'm like oh that is just awful (laughs) not not one you like yeah no don't do it my (laughs) wife always has an argument with me no they want they like it but you know i just know how it doesn't really have much meaning to me i don't know i get a real sense of um it's that kind of that deep sort of cold southwest water in a lot of those those photos when i'm looking at it i feel i feel the the exposure and you know being right in amongst it when i'm looking at your photos i imagine not even close to what you would feel when you're under a you know 10 foot plus wave and and it's barreling down on you and you're you're i mean from what i've seen from the way that you sit on on these on these documentaries and things is you're that little bit closer into the wave, you're always that step further out than most of the other photographers sitting on the back of a, a jet ski and just jumping in at the last minute. It's um, it's a it's a kind of brutal and 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 very exposed position that you put yourself into a lot of the time. It's not as bad as you'd think. Like when you're surfing big waves and you fall off, you know you've got that. You think you're going to make the the wave for starters, mm. and then you fall off, and instantly, you know, you get winded or something like that, and you get a decent hold down. But when you're shooting, you're calculated in a way, like you're in the impact zone, yeah, mm. but you're, you're getting a good breath. Yeah. Okay. You yeah. Know, you yeah. know you're going over, mm. so you can get a good breath. Yeah. And okay. Stuff like that. So. If a surfer can surf the waves, why can't you shoot it wide in the waves as well? Mm. There's no reason. Yeah. As long as you build up to it. Yeah. It's like anything. As a surfer, you don't just go and take off at Jaws. Mm. Yeah. You know, you build up, you know, like most kids, taken off in the white water and you pr- progress. I think that's where, you know, I've had a lot of photographers go, oh, I'd like to go and shoot the right from the water. Like, you mm. know, shooting from the water and wide angle, you know, so you're going to cop them. When you feel comfortable at places like you swim out to Margs mm. on a close out day and yeah. if that, if you feel comfortable doing that, yeah, sure, you you're ready for that, but don't 
don't jump. Yeah. Like yeah. I, that's why I said before, I don't really see myself as a super creative. I'm just like a sporty guy with a camera. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Natural, a natural progression up towards that. Just, yeah. 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 Certainly a long way away from uh, a lot of people I would have spent my youth with. That's for sure. It's, uh, you know, very, very uh, in the UK, very unexposed lifestyle, you know, you're between an office and home and, and not much else. But, but out here, it's, uh, yeah, it's a different different experience and seeing you in amongst it is 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 quite sort of yeah quite yeah, phenomenal certainly a raw ocean here <laughs> yeah, for sure yeah um so what would you say the the um the biggest factor is for you to get to where you are today i mean just being really persistent because yeah. you know there's a lot of tough times where you think you, you know should i go back to like a rescue job go up in the mines and and earn a good quid mm. the, yeah it's just it's a tough gig. And the thing is, perception of it is, you know, you can look on, so, you know, we'll go back to social and Instagram and, or whatever. It looks like this amazing lifestyle, which it is. It is a good lifestyle, but it's a tough one too. Mm. You know, yeah. it's just been super persistent and um, being able to adapt to the change, you know, from yeah. film to digital to now, you know, magazines are disappearing mm. and being more online and how to do that. Yeah. No, I'm looking after a wife and three kids as well so yep. yeah but you know i've in the end i'm surfing a lot and I've, I've got a good lifestyle and it's hard to put a number on what that's worth you know do i give that up to go and earn you know 100 150k doing rescue mm. yeah or do i just enjoy what i'm doing and especially enjoy the the freedom and the, the lifestyle of that yeah because you know being your own boss is pretty nice yeah 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 i bet get to yep. pick and choose you know i'm picking and choosing jobs more now than i used to i used mm. to just take everything on yeah just, just had to now i can like if that job doesn't fit or i'm you know feel like i'm sending the wrong message mm. i'll just knock it back yeah okay yeah 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 right and what what was uh, talking about jobs recent jobs you're in new zealand um just recently is that a another surf series in on the coast in nz i mean i haven't seen any shots from it what was the what was the trip about yeah, so that trip was for like Coastlines, a brand in New Zealand um, with their new wetsuits. I mean, I, right, don't okay. ha I don't really shoot a whole heap of um, surf anymore. It's not mm. like I'm practicing. I'd yep. rather surf yeah. these days. But <laughs> um, yeah, it's been really good. So that one was, you know, I worked with my son. I worked with Bo Young, mm. you know, amazing surfer. And it's just about creating the lifestyle around the brand you know mm. it's not like you know i mean bo's a you know he's won world titles and stuff like that but it's not like the real pro surf look and this guy has to ride in these wetsuits it's yeah documenting um the characters and cultures are around it so it's really good to be a part of yeah you know and there's a few good crew in it and you just go there and and enjoy it and that makes it makes it fun it's not like i've got a tag on the pro surfers coat tails like 24 7 and yeah and not miss a shot I can yeah sort of yeah. i've got a lot of freedom to do what i want yeah so it's not like you've got the shot list you've just you can go and be yeah. with the guys go and be be amongst it and yeah you enjoy can, that part you got it you yeah. can just do whatever you want and it, it's it's good because you know and it's and it suits what i do and what i like with surfing as well like getting away from it and being on your own and exploring whereas you know pipe has just finished which i watched it, it was amazing mm. but there's 400 photogs on the beach shooting yeah. the same shot you yeah know, that just doesn't appeal to me yeah. maybe for five minutes but it's so much better being away from everything yeah you think you think a lot more when you've when you're out on your own yeah got a lot more space to yeah be creative or, or at least have time to try yeah, a few things. Try a few things, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, for me, I, I uh, have a pretty, a couple of like really standout memories uh, on the water or in the water and some for better or for, for worse, you know, I've been pretty close to drowning. Is there anything um, like that that sort of stands out with you in the ocean? Well, the, the drowning-wise was just off pretty much right in front of the house here at Bommy when I decided to shoot solid waves. There was one tow team, roughly mm. in Margs back then. Right. And I thought, I'll just swim out, design this really film camera with a 300 mil lens that was huge. So I obviously wasn't thinking about anything. Mm. Putting it in a backpack, 
and then paddling it out on my big board to shoot these guys towing in and then you know a huge set come and took me to the bottom but you know I was you know I was working on my I didn't want to drop the backpack or yeah. lose the camera it's not like yeah. I'm getting free gear or anything <laughs> so yeah I fought that and but that you know that put me on a different path it put me on you know I went and got a jet ski after that yeah okay. and that, that opened yeah. up other doors so it yeah. was kind of like I had to go through it but it's just you know with me it's just meeting the people when you're when you're out and about you know I love listening to other people's stories mm. yeah. uh, you know how they've got to where they are and that's kind of what inspires me more yeah. than anything. Yeah. In yeah. the end, I'm just taking a photo. It's really doing it for me, isn't it? Like, <laughs> okay, you put yourself in position, but it, the ocean's doing everything for you, really. And mm. the surfers are doing stuff for you and the elements all come together. But it's, um, yeah, the people you meet on the road. The culture around it. Yeah. 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 yeah great. Great. And what's the, uh, I mean, what's the, the, the hardest and sort of best parts of your job? I mean, is there, is there some really tough days when you're out there in the surf other than getting pinned? Yeah, I think the hardest is just like your own mind because you just, it feels like you've done it a lot mm. and you're like, it's just Groundhog Day, especially if you're working for a magazine or something like that. You're like, this is ridiculous. Why am I out, why am I out here? Mm. It's quite boring, but... Um, Oh, it's pretty hard it's, you, you can't really complain about it you're out in the ocean it's difficult to even say it's that difficult yeah, yeah. You know, I feel embarrassed actually go, oh, what's the <laughs> hardest part of the, the job like, photography wise it's business for sure but my yeah. wife deals with all that so I don't even have to deal with any of that either mm. so um, I'm pretty lucky I, I really should any moment you're out in the water it's good yeah yeah I'm definitely so I'm not, gonna that. Win, I'm not going to whinge about it. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. For sure. Um, you, I've, I've noticed that you've, you've started running, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's a recent or not, but started running um, courses for, for photographers. Is, is that to be able to get people out into the, the water like you or are you uh, facilitating just entry level to photography? What's the, what's the plan and what's the, the thought around that? Yeah, the workshops have been good. Yeah. So it's like it, it's all different skill levels. So you've got to really, you've got to be up front on how good you are on the water mm. as well. I can find out pretty quick, Yeah, like super quick, but I don't want to, you know, lose a life in the meantime <laughs> either. Yeah. But it's, no, it's just all around photography. And, um, you know, with Vagabond Photographic, there's Warren Keelan, um, Damien Martin, and Dan Morton, so they're the guys behind it. And we've only just got our insurance in place. Right. Because before I had insurance, but we didn't have blanket insurance, which we've just got through. Mm. And that was the toughest part. Mm. It took a year to get that. Yeah, okay. Because we are taking people into the ocean. Yeah. And um, we did one in Tahiti last year and in the Northwest. And all the guys at different levels the one in Tahiti they're all pretty similar all mm. pretty strong swimmers and they just want to learn a couple more things to take their photography to another level they're already yeah. in the water yeah. and they already had good water skills so that was kind of easy it's, we didn't have a huge gap between maybe the weakest as you'd say weakest swimmer mm. to the best swimmer yeah. everyone was really close yeah, in okay. skill level yeah. and the first day was the best day for we had like a maybe a four or five foot day at Chopes and we're saying you know Dom who's another photographer that was with me doing the course he's like this is what you do if you go over the falls and stuff like that and, and good set come and clean them all up except me and Dom <laughs> so it was really yeah. good because they got the feel of what even like a four or five foot day yeah and they're on their toes after that yeah I bet. you know if they <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then one went opposite to where we told him to swim and we're like oh shit we're gonna lose someone here yeah. but it's it's more the experience people get sometimes crew benefit business wise mm. You know, they're already doing well, but they just can't take it to another level. Give them a few ideas. Yeah. I mean, I'm not right. I just, this is what I do. Yeah. And it works for me. Mm. And two, like maybe a couple of different techniques. Like one guy was struggling with his underwater stuff. And, you know, we'd 
talked him through it. This is how we did it. And the next session, got his best photos ever. Yeah, so right. So he was wow. stoked. Like, yeah. that's worth the whole trip yeah, worth yeah. It to him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's fun, you know, and it's kind of really inspires me more, like, being around those. They, I think it's nearly more for me than them. Yeah. It is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good trips, good fun. Get people absolutely frothing yeah. around you as well. And yeah. they, you know, the Northwest one, a lot of people hadn't even been up there before and mm. just how raw it was. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we had an English guy on the last one and the first day we got, because I had Tom, Tom Carroll with me on that trip as well. Mm. And um, the first day we got to Cal Barrett, it was huge and it was pumping. And he was really determined to swim. And I'm like, nah. It just wouldn't really let, talk him out of it. Yeah. But he was ne- I was never going to let him do it. Yeah, yeah. And then um, on the way back, he had a session there as well. And it was like nearly a quarter of the size, maybe a third of the size. And he loved it. And, yeah. he got, and then he thanked me for not letting him out on the first day. <laughs> I was like, we couldn't really afford to lose you on the first day. <laughs> You know, you've got to really, I mean, I do the same thing. You've got to take into account your skill level and, mm. and I leave it, you know, a lot more in the tank these days to be able to get in. Yeah. You know, Sometimes, you know, you, that's probably where I've been in trouble the most, like pushing it to the absolute limit of energy. Mm. And then you're like, holy shit, I've got to get in yet. And you need a fair bit of energy to get in certain spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it yeah, like might be a tough swim. Yeah. To yeah. get get around the reef or whatever it is, so. the rip or the distance, and yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah you, you need enough energy to actually get in because in the end, no one's going to help you. Yeah, <laughs> brutal realization. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, and have you done have you done um, uh, free diving courses? Have you have you done sort of breath work? I mean, going back to being pinned under waves, have you learnt professional techniques for that? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. So when I decided that I was going to up it in the levels, mm. I was trying to. F- or it wasn't rocket science. I just had to look at what all the big wave surfers were doing. Mm. They were all doing breath hold courses. Mm. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I need to do that. And so I contacted a lady in South Africa, actually, and she said, no, um, Joe Knight's doing them on the east coast of Australia. Right. And so I went, I flew over there and did my first course over there in Vico. Yeah, okay. With five Victorian charges that, and it was just good. You just realise, like, it gives you a lot of confidence. And, yeah. um, you know, and plus it's helped me with my surfing as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I recommend doing that for sure. I mean, my sons have done it. I recommend it to anyone mm. for the ocean, whatever yeah. you're doing. Because, I mean, I get in trouble more so in small days when I'm mucking around. Yeah. Like, I do stupid things, take off late that I know I'm not going to make. And all of a sudden, you know, the breath hold comes in. You're, not, you're not, <laughs> yeah. not as prepared. You don't think you need to be as prepared. But, yeah, it's a good course and it just – and it's not really it – is it is free diving, but it's also high heart rate stuff because free diving, you, you know, you want to keep your heart rate down and you can breathe up on the surface. Mm, you, yeah. When you're surfing, obviously, you're using a lot of energy and you're breathing quite heavily. And being aware with where you're at with it, it's like – you don't get to a spot and, and get super excited and jump in. You kind of, like, I'll wait for a while until I calm down and then I'll, I'll be in the water until my heart rate goes down. So if I do get mm. one right at the start, I'm pretty much good to go. Yeah. Like, yeah, even great. when I'm paddling out here in Margs, I'll do techniques all the way out. Mm. So no, I'm not the best surfer in the world. I'm a fair chance 50-50 that I'm coming off. <laughs> so, and then I'm ready for, you know, a hold down. Yeah. Like, yeah. really ready. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just being aware of that. You know, you see some guys, they're, oh, they're all, you know, they're going to get flogged by a wave and they're paddling, a, you know, so quick to get out of the way. It's no point. It's getting you anyway. Just relax <laughs> and enjoy it. Let's go with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you into spearfishing or anything like that then if you're doing, doing a bit of breath hold or is it it's more, mostly the surf for you in the water? Mainly just surf. I'll yeah. get a few craze now and then. Yeah. I like training, getting craze. It's yeah. amazing, you know, this cra- you know, a cray at the back of a cave and how long you can hold your breath for just to get that thing out. <laughs> but I'll do that. I used to do a lot of spear fishing. Yeah. Not as much now because we went to New Zealand and we come back and so we sold everything. So we're just basically getting back on our feet. Mm. And um, yeah, that could be the next purchase. I nearly did, nearly got all the gear the other week when we had like a 
two week flat spell and yeah. just pristine conditions. I got my cray license again and got a cray loop <laughs> yeah. and just walked over the hill and didn't really get any crays, but had fun doing it. Yeah, just, just that finding helps. excuse to get in the water and yeah. 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 Have, you bla- have you ever blacked out or had any? Um, no, no, no. no. It's like that. No, it's, yeah. I've never black. If you black out in the water and there's no help, you obviously die. Yeah. So yep. I definitely haven't had that. I've got, I've had a couple of good hold downs at Marg's and um, I can feel the blood going, you know, from my fingers and feet and stuff like that. So mm. I felt that where you're like, God, I couldn't really take too many more of these. Yeah. But, um, but you, you kind of know what you're going through as well. That's why it's so good to do the course because yeah. you're not panicking. If yeah. I'd panicked in those situations, I wouldn't have, it, I wouldn't have lasted yeah. at all. Yeah, and there's a lot of guys from here because Joe's come over here and um, taught a lot of the guys from Margs, even the older boys and stuff, because they charge mm. and just a few recovery breaths and on what knowing what to do, and they're all pretty relaxed out there. So yeah. it's good. Yeah, yeah. Plus, yeah. you know, first aid and stuff like that. If something does happen to others, you you, know, you can help you out. Know how to deal with it? Yeah. yeah. Well, I was a fireman for 19 years. Yeah, now, yeah. So you're already pretty so well equipped. I'm pretty good with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. Anything else you want to uh, you want to raise or talk about? Um, anything coming up next year for you? No, nah, not off the top of my head. We'll just yeah. get into the workshops. We can go full bottle with that. Mm. Now we we can add a lot of little ones in because of the because you know, when you run it from a business, you got to be fully covered. Mm. So that's good, and um, we'll get into that. And I'll probably start some sort of personal project because I think you need that to keep it to keep it real and, and not get bogged down. Mm. And it, it'll be something to do with the ocean for sure. I just yeah. don't know what yet. I've got a few ideas, but it'll be like documenting people's life around the ocean more than anything. Yeah, right. I'm not really interested in chasing um, swells or, or anything like that because I've already done it. I haven't got goals on swimming in certain, like, certain ways. I had them for a little while. I've let them go mm. because in the end, I just don't need to do it. And it is can be pretty risky and yeah. expensive yeah. and it's self selfish as well like you know i've got a family to think of and not not that i'm going to die or anything but you put a lot of effort into it yeah and uh, and then the travel and being away and and it's got to be personally it's got to be a personal goal and worth it you know I'm, I'm not doing it for anyone else yeah so yeah it's not worth it for me at the moment and i'd rather just be around good people mm. So the so the people story yeah. connection piece might might come through. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I'd yeah. definitely love to do something. Yeah, just getting the time and um, getting the right idea and what you want to do with it as well. Mm. I mean, I'm not going to do it for any reason apart from you know increasing my skill level with however I work and and you know like yourself, you know, being around different people and meeting them. It's quite inspiring. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that episode. Real pleasure, real honor to sit down and talk with, you know, the man, the legend, Russell Lord. If you get a moment, head over to his website, russellordphoto.com and go check out Community, which is the the latest um, piece that he's been working on that we finished up the show talking about. You can also find a link there to his workshops and his social media if you want to go check that out. As always, please take time to like, follow, subscribe. Share the show, makes such a world of difference, makes it so much easier to find. You've got the time or the energy to drop us a review. Five stars, please. Please take the time to do that as well. Thanks again for listening. Talk to you next week.